Who's this gorgeous single fat lady? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be single my entire life. <sighs> nah, I don't think so. And I don't, I don't want a single person in here. You'll find someone. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. You'll, someone, someone will find you. Someone will love you. <laughs> no, this is part of the reason why. Sorry, let me collect myself. Listen, I think she's gonna eat somebody, but I mean, she has to hit the gym. We can't beat around the bush, right? Right, right, guys, right, guys. I'm just, I'm just saying, she has to hit the gym in order to attract that man. Money, 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 money. Getting villa bara baza, debi baza de entranza. What is up, guys? Welcome to another video. Hope you guys are all doing good. In this video, we're gonna break down some women which are super emotional on TikTok. So, without further ado, guys. Let's get straight into today's video and do not forget to like, comment and of course share the video because it helps us out in the algorithm. Okay, first video. If you're sad about being single right now, you need to hear this. A little tough love. Oh, I wish I had a boyfriend. I wish I had a husband. You know what? You are your relationship. You are your best friend. Mm -hmm. Get out there. Entertain yourself. Yeah. Be happy with yourself. I love being single. If I'm in a relationship, I like that too. You know, don't get the open. She is gorgeous. I agree. You can't seek validation from other people. You have to work on yourself. And then when you're ready, you can get into a relationship. But the thing with relationship is, I look at it as something which forces you to evolve because you always have to think of your significant other and the way that she is feeling and all of that jazz. So. If you're into that, that's great. Let's continue. You want to know what the worst part about being a single mom is? Is you get robbed of a certain motherhood experience. It just doesn't exist for you. When you're a single mom, you don't get to operate in a certain way because you're carrying a different type of load. And that I think is the most frustrating slash heartbreaking thing because it's just like- Okay, don't date a single mother. Don't do it. If you have kids, then you can date a single mom. But if you don't have kids, just start. Start from scratch. It's easier, it's better, less headache. So I am married. I've been married for 17 years. I've been in the relationship for 20 years. Okay. I'm 52. And I have been absolutely obsessed with watching all the single girls' five to nines after their 95. And the reason why I'm so obsessed with watching. Harping back to what I said before, guys. You can never satisfy a woman, you can't. Doesn't matter what you do for her. Look, she's sitting in her husband's bed or her husband's house. 100% that this man has probably bought in the house for her. Working his ass off just so she can have it good. So she can have internet, so she can post these videos oh, i want to become an influencer baby i i support you to then have your wife talk shit about you on the internet you can't make this up guys watching them because i am filled with absolute envy and jealousy about what these women are doing and i'm jealous because when i was single i never did anything like that i was didn't get married I didn't get married until I was 35 years old. So that means I was single, single for a very long time in my young adulthood. And I really considered that time at the time as like a placeholder kind of event. Meaning that in my mind, I wasn't really living life. I mean, I was, I was working, I had boyfriends, I was going out, I was doing things, but I didn't put any real investment in that time because because to me, it wasn't a real life that I was living. I was just kind of going through the motions in a way until I could live my real life, which is when I got married. What? Because in my mind, that single time wasn't a real time. It was just kind of waiting out the time until I met the man that I was going to marry. Okay. Big problem, guys. And this is not just a woman problem. This is people in general, right? You have to get it out. If you want to travel, if you want to do something, if you want to take a risk, you have to do it today. I don't give a damn about the people which are saying tomorrow. You have to do it now. You had, you had to have done it yesterday. You can't wait until you're 35 in order to start living your life. Because then you'll be 50 and regretting 
I don't know, maybe 10 years of you just waiting for things to happen. Imagine just waiting for it to happen. Or you could just go out and do it. Have children and then I was gonna have a real life. Now, all of these years later, married for such a long time with two daughters and I'm looking on, scrolling on TikTok and look at these, looking at these single women who were, I was those women but they are enjoying and reveling in the time, the peace, the calm, the mm -mm. self-care. Mm -mm. They're not. It's all a facade. Social media is all a facade. Everyone is just pretending, pretending to have a good time, pretending. Don't compare yourself to other people and do not measure yourself with other people when it comes to social media. Don't do that. And I'm looking on, scrolling on TikTok and look at these, looking at these single women who were I was those women, but they are enjoying and reveling in the time, the peace, the calm, the self-care that being single is. Not having to worry about catering to a mate, not worrying about what another, your partner thinks, um, not having to take care of children, not having to manage a household for all these people. Just coming home and being able to make your choices that are self-care, that are affirming, that's your time, your peace, and like literally enjoying and valuing that time. I never did it. I thought it was a waste of time. I thought I was just going through the motions until I could live the real life, which was marriage. And I've been living that real life for 17 years. And I'm so tired and I'm so exhausted. And today I woke up, I've been sick all day, but I haven't been able to really take care of myself or rest and relax because I have so much I have to do. I'm vicariously living through those women, posting those lives and thinking about what if so i am married i've been married <sighs> i don't know guys i do not know because that sounds like she wants a divorce that's how it starts and then she quits i'm sick i don't know what i want and then she quits on the marriage and this guy imagine the husband right now is oblivious to what is happening. He doesn't even know. He thinks his wife is happy, creating TikTok, she's sick today. He's so focused on bringing the bread home that he's not probably catching up on these small little signs that she's shooting out. I wanna live vicariously through them. What does that mean? It means that she wants to cheat. That's what she's saying she's saying it out but she's not really saying i want to cheat she's just like kind of like hinting to it what do you mean by you want to live vicariously through them what does that mean i don't know guys leave it in the comment section i might be off i might be wrong maybe i'm the guy which is just crazy people were crying about being lonely because their lives are all together but they don't have a companion therefore they feel lonely you guys are crying because you have no idea what you are crying for like you don't have the experience of how it's like to be in a relationship and still feel lonely ask people who have been married and the love is not there anymore ask people who have been divorced ask people who've been in long-term relationships where they are literally just forcing things to work you can be in a long-term relationship or a marriage and still feel lonely that is the worst thing you can ever do to yourself. Getting married because you're trying to escape loneliness. Because I'm telling you, you can never run away from loneliness by having somebody next to you. When it comes to women, they'll never be satisfied. Doesn't matter how much effort you put in, doesn't matter. If you marry her, she's going to want to be single and vice versa. So you can't win this game, you can't. That's why I'm saying the best thing that you can do right now is just literally just be quiet and just let her go through her emotions just just let it be because the thing is like this right the more and more you try to control things the worse it becomes that's just how it is and that's how women are they don't want to be controlled women are i have to say like cats they just want to walk in and out as they please this girl at work said something to me the other day and I like can't get it out of my head. I heard a baby okay. around her. I was like, oh God, that's free birth control for me. And she's like, oh, that makes me think of my little baby. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm too selfish. I don't want kids. Like I have a dog. 
that's enough for me. A couple okay. of days later, she's like, so you don't want kids, but you have a dog. Do you have like a boyfriend or anything? And I was like, no, I've never had a boyfriend. She's like, how old are you? I said, 27. She's like, I don't believe it. There is no way that she is 27 and never had a boyfriend. Like, and you've never had a boyfriend? And I like never really cared, but there's something about her like saying that that really hit me this time because like, I've never been on even like two dates with the same person. Like even guys I've talked to or like hooked up with, they'll slowly stop talking to me and then i find out they have a girlfriend or they get into a new relationship like a week later and like when i was young okay let me be frank with you maybe it's the so it's something physical 100 percent. because guys go for the physical and women usually go emotional so it's it's 100 percent physical and she probably haven't asked the guys why because she's too afraid of the answer because if it is something like it not being tight enough, there's nothing you can do about it. Younger and I didn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I'd be like, it's because I'm fat. I used to weigh like 320 pounds. I lost 160 pounds. It's not like I'm being hit up every day, every week, even every month with like people in my DMs or like messaging me on Snapchat trying to get with me. It's like no one hits me up. It's not even like I'm being selective with who I'm picking and like turning people away. It's just like people <laughs> aren't coming up to me and I don't... I don't understand. You can't have it both. You can't say that we are creepy when we do approach and then also want us to approach. It's very, very difficult. You're sending mixed signals. So what I suggest is you start approaching men. I feel like I have an issue with people like wanting to hook up with me, but if it tries to go a step further, they're like, absolutely not, no. Mm. I don't want to just like hook up with random people that I don't know. So I'll tell people that I don't want to hook up with them until uh -huh. I know them. And then they're like, well, you're approved. I'm like, I literally can't win. Why it's like hitting me so hard this time is the fact that she had the audacity to ask by choice. And I just sit there and I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not by choice. When I was younger. Wait, so she's an incel. I was like, oh, it's because I'm fat. Oh, it's because I'm fat. fat. Once I lose weight, I'll have no problem. And now that I'm like not fat. I'm just like, what is it? What? But she is still a little bit fat. She is. Is the reason. So now I'm going to finish my energy drink and hit the gym until I can't feel my emotions anymore. Maybe that's the reason. This girl. Oh my god, that that's sad. Honestly. Don't put it out on TikTok, guys. Don't. If you're emotional, just keep it to yourself. Get a friend, get a therapist, talk to the therapist, but don't put it out on TikTok. This is crazy. I think the reason why I'm still single is because I'm I'm selecting. I'm trying to select I think the reason why I'm still single is because I'm selecting. I'm trying to select that perfect man. The the king. I want the king. You understand? Right now, I'm not selecting a king. I'm not selecting a king because okay. it's getting too much. Now, I'm not selecting. See, if you know you are broke or handicap, or anybody, if you shall know you like me, tell me. Go straight to the point. I'm not selecting a king. I'm, I'm not doing shakarami or shakaramo. Go straight to the point. Let's start talking. Let's see. I'm not doing shak. You know what's so sad about women? When they're in their 20s, then they're wasting so much time. But when they hit their 30s, all of a sudden, I want a man. I want stable. I want stability. And just some few years ago, you were just at the club and going crazy, twerking on everybody. So I'm like, when you have it, when you are at your sexual peak, and that is when you should, I don't know, try to sign a contract. It just makes no sense. I mean, looking at it from a capitalistic perspective, it makes no sense. Sign the contract when you are, when you got that sexy ass, the breasts are strong or what is it called? The breasts are still tight and not hangy. That's when you sign the contract. You can't wait. 
A few ladies are crying online about being lonely and I want us to talk about the Crocodile Tears mm. marketing strategy. Whoa. Hi guys, I'm Lewa Lyon, the voice of marketing and your friend in all things marketing, brand building, business mindset and sometimes pop culture. Okay. So there have been some videos going around the internet of women who are crying about feeling lonely and not having the partners that they want at this point of their lives and honestly I don't judge what people want. They are welcome and they have every right to want what they want when they want it and if it's not coming they have every right to feel how they feel about it what i want to focus on is the marketing and social media element because that's what we do on this page and where these content pieces are regarded i think that it's a great illustration of what i like to call the crocodile tears marketing strategy now people share their tears online we know this we see videos of people crying all the time and it does get people's attention right okay but they can still be an element of authenticity and genuineness in that content because that person is truly ex sharing what they've really experienced so there's nothing wrong with people crying online in my opinion if you're feeling sad and you're crying and you're sharing i disagree 100 percent with this content creator because you're never gonna you're never gonna catch me crying online never never that day ain't ever gonna happen the only day that i would cry is if let's say i don't know if i got like maybe like a hundred million been watching i don't know how many videos maybe what 400 videos of women just are constantly emotional in their cars and for some reason they have to sit and vet in their cars you can't go anywhere else. You sit in the car and then you start betting. I hate men. I don't like men. Ah. And then when the tire goes flat, then you're like, oh, baby, can you come and change my flat tire? But I thought you were done with men. So you're sharing a story that naturally comes out and you're crying. There's nothing wrong. I want to use two ladies as an example to show you the crocodile tears mm. marketing strategy which is one of the most supreme forms of clickbait that you can find online the first lady we have is miss xo she's a youtuber and we know she's on youtube she shares her life story she shares her opinions that's what she does and mm -hmm. when you watch her video she's in her bonnet she's home you can tell she was sharing a story and then she naturally broke down in sharing her experience right so it seems very authentic and i don't think she was planning on crying in that video it doesn't seem that way from the way she expresses herself then we have this second video of a lady who's also crying about the same thing but the thing that is very very different to what miss xo did here is that this lady created cutaways of other parts of her life in between the tears it's like I'm so sad oh but look at how great i am at this job i'm so sad but oh look at how wonderful my friends are that sounds like a psychopath i'm so sad but you can book me for this like <laughs> that's exactly the kind of cutaways this person had and for me as a person who helps people build personal brands and who helps people create content online for any business related thing i can tell you right now that that is somebody who's trying to become incredibly relevant mm. and is using their tears as a way to catch people's attention and their hearts right when you cry people assume that you are being genuine that you are being vulnerable and vulnerability is interpreted as you being real and authentic but it's not always the case and people show themselves if you're really being authentic you're not going to cry and then show cutaways you know you're going to cry because you're sharing a story and it naturally led to tears that's how most normal people cry right this is marketing yourself 101 using your crocodile tears now could she be sharing something that's actually how she feels absolutely she could genuinely want a man she could genuinely want a life that she doesn't have or whatever the case may be but the way she's expressing it is also showing you that she understands that this kind of content could be make her more relevant it could make her famous it could help her get more followers right it's i hope I hope, I don't know if it's true, but I hope that she is mistaken. The whole date whoever likes you thing, it breaks my heart. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Because a lot of guys don't even know that they're the guy in this situation. And sometimes you will never know. But I remember one time I was dealing with this chick, right? I went to her crib, right? She'd been knowing me for years. She'd been hitting my DM for years, but I never really wanted her for real. I finally give her the time of day. I pull up to her crib, right? 
that one morning I had pulled up a guy that actually wanted her, called her phone. He hit her with the, oh, let's go get some brunch. Let me take you out for breakfast. Let's do this. Let's do that. He making plans. She looks over at me like just this laughing as he's blabbering on. So while he's asking, she's just like, okay, I'll let you know. Just bullshitting. I'm just dragging him along. After she hangs up the phone, she looks at me and says, oh, you know how it's just like, it's just like the right guy. Like he does everything. He's a nice, kind guy. He does everything for you, but see? he's just in like the wrong body. You I couldn't see? even, bro. I, I really, I really felt for him, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, bro, like if you're not the complete package, they're just going to tolerate you and limit you to them. Like you're going to have like limited access to that woman. Like she would never fully like you. If you don't got the looks, the money, the, um, the kindness, the good guy stuff, it's just certain things you, you would never get the complete woman. Is what I'm saying. And as sad as that may sound, bro, you just have to be aware of who you are to that girl. <laughs> the whole. I have to say it's 50 50 because I have been there, guys. I've been the guy which is sitting there and hugging my girlfriend and loving her and being, you know, the greatest boyfriend on planet Earth, right? But then she loses respect for you. But then we can switch the script as well. I've been the guy as well which has gone over to a girl, we've done the nasty, and then I hear her texting somebody, and I'm like, who are you texting? Oh, it's just my boyfriend. What? First of all, I did not know you had a boyfriend, and she's just texting some shit to him, like, oh, no, I'm just with a friend right now, and uh, I'm soon finished, you can come and get me. So it's like, it's crazy. I've been on both sides, right? And it wasn't anything that I knew about because honestly, if I knew that she had a boyfriend, of course I wouldn't have texted her, but it's just really looking at female nature from both perspectives, right? And if I'm being honest, I'd rather be the guy which is watching while she is doing all of that shenanigans, right? And not be the guy which is texting her and being like, oh baby, when are you coming home? Because, brother, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. So if a girl is not really giving you the time or the day, I have to say, there's certain things which you have to work on. And when you work on those things, she will at least rank you a little bit higher in whatever, I don't know, whatever sexual market list she has, she's gonna have rank you a little bit higher and then you can try to pursue her, but if you're the nice guy and you're doing everything you're supposed to do and then you're texting her and you text her at the right, that doesn't really work, it doesn't. If you get really worried when you don't get a text back from that awesome person, then this video could change your life forever. Look, I know you care about them, a lot. That around them you can be a version of yourself that you often hide away from others. That's why when you send them a text and they don't respond for a while, or at all, it happens. You start getting a really weird and uncomfortable feeling inside of you and along with that, some really difficult thoughts. Things like, they don't want to talk to me, they're with someone else, or they don't really like me. You try argue with those thoughts because they can't- Don't overthink, she's probably very busy. Two things it could be. She's probably very busy or she's with a guy. Usually it's the guy. So if she's not texting you and or is showing some signs that she's interested, she probably has a boyfriend, she probably does. And there's nothing you can do about that. Here are five ways to tell if you're friends with a psychopath. Hi, I'm Vic and I'm a diagnosed psychopath. Psychopaths are extremely manipulative people, so if there's a psychopath in your life, you're probably being manipulated in some way. Psychopaths okay. make up 1-4% to 4 of the population, so it's very, very likely that you have one in your life. The first way to spot a psychopath is if you know somebody that's extremely charming, especially when they first meet somebody. If the first time you met them, you thought that they were the coolest person in the world, and you notice that every time they meet new people, new people seem to love them, but then over time, they kind of just seem normal to you. That that sounds like all my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> I am so tired of feeling like it's never gonna be my turn to find love and I know that someone out there knows what I mean right now. Like I know I'm overreacting to this specific incident, but this is like the fourth time this has happened since I re-downloaded the dating apps earlier this month okay. and decided, you know what, I'm an adult. I'm gonna try and get like an adult relationship <sighs> and actually do dating for once. Okay. So we match, we talk for a while, we plan the date, right? 
We can't do that day. We moved the date to this day. Totally fine. It's huge. How many liters are those? I go, how about 5.30? Reasonable time. Let's actually get dinner. Like, let's mm. commit to this. This seems promising. He goes, okay. Then he texts me and goes, can we actually do 6.30? Because I have a meeting. It's going to run a little long. I'll be able to do 6.30 instead. And I said, that's a little bit annoying because it's a tad bit late. I'm going to be starving, but that's fine. So today's the day, right? 5.45 rolls around. I've just finished doing my hair and makeup, and I get another text from him going, hey, I'm running late again. Okay. Could it be possible that we move the date to 7 again? So I text all my friends, both guys and girls, just to make sure I'm not crazy and go, do I allow this? And they go, no. Moving it once, maybe. Twice, that's where I would have stopped it. But a third time? Mm. Absolutely not. I'm starving at this point, and that's just disrespectful of my time. So I send them a little respectful. You know what? Hey, don't even sweat it. Like, you enjoy your evening. It's pretty late already, and I am starving, so I'm just going to eat. And he keeps texting me and he's also like now trying to guilt trip me being like i'm not going to enjoy my evening like blah. so red flag you know bullet dodged i guess in the long term and usually i would just let it go however i have planned like almost four or five dates now since i redownload the apps almost every single time this is exactly what keeps happening they keep pushing the date back pushing the date back and <laughs> i just have to say hey i'm not going anymore because that's disrespectful okay. of my time and me as a person and like I know this isn't the biggest deal in the world, but especially feels like it really digs into that. When she was younger, she had no problem. The reason why she's crying right now is because she's approaching the wall. And now she's getting really nervous and she's like, oh my God, I really need to settle down. This girl looks at least 34, at least. She is stressed about this. I get it, but then again, that is just the market. People don't have time for you. That's just how it is. That's dating 101. A childhood wound of like, no one's ever going to love you. You're never going to find anyone who loves Whoa. and respects you. And it's like, why does this keep happening? Like when you make a plan and you say you're going to show up at a certain time, I, and maybe it's just me, I need you to show up at that time. I need to know that you are a person of your word and that you can show up for me, especially like early on in the beginning like this. It's just a big thing for me and like trusting people and consistency. Shout out childhood wounds. Why is it so hard to find a man who respects you and your- Stop doing this to all the women out there. Stop going on to TikTok and posting your feelings. It doesn't help anybody. Time as a person. These are some very bare minimum standards to be setting and why does it feel so impossible for them to meet? Like I've had enough, I'm exhausted. It feels like there's absolutely no end in sight. Everyone on this planet deserves someone who respects them and their time and treats them well. And I'm not even asking people to like move mountains for me anymore at this point. It feels crazy. Like these boys and dating are genuinely starting to make me feel crazy. It's crazy because you are a god to some guys and you do not even give them the time or the day. So that's how it is. Let's see here. You know when people say if you're super attractive, that's the reason that you're single? Okay. It's true, and I will tell you my own personal experience with that. Okay. I'm, let's just say, conventionally attractive enough. You know, I'm not some, like, 10 out of 10, but I'm, like, fine. I'm just fine. And that makes me super approachable. I understand what she means. She's a strong six. I get approached by the opposite sex all of the time. I literally yeah. sat down for two seconds in Times Square today, and a man came over, sat down next to me, and just struck up a conversation. Mm. Am I approached by people that I necessarily would seek out on my own? No, but I'm still approached, so my pool- Yeah, because she's average enough. If she looks like you can approach her, a lot of guys will approach her. Girls like this usually get approached more than the hottest girls and the ugliest girls. The hottest girls and the ugliest girls don't get approached. But the girls which are somewhat, I would have to say what, the fours up to the six, they get approached by most men. Because it's almost like you have this confidence you can go and talk to a six. Like, she's just a six. But I'm pretty, pretty sure if you're like super, super, super mm. attractive, no one's going to approach you because the rate of them getting denied immediately is so much higher. 100%. Me, I'm going to sit there and talk with you. Do I want to all the time? No. But I'm going to. You hunt the girls which you think that you have a chance with. 
I'm not someone that posts or cries or anything on the internet, so this is this is a new one for me. Okay. Um, I just I guess I need I need girls to rally with me and lift me up because I feel so defeated right now. Um, I've been trying to meet someone, just anybody worth my time for years. And Too high standards. Because what, she is a solid, I would have to say a solid five, right? And do you know how many guys approach girls like this? So many guys. She gets approached more than the hottest girls. Like, and dating apps are so awful. I don't need to explain to you how awful the dating apps are. So I've been trying to meet people in public. And they're still trash when I do randomly meet people in public. But tonight takes the cake. Um, last week, I was like, I'm part of an app that you can basically get invited to these events. And there was a comedy thing coming up. And I, I bought a ticket and thought, maybe I'll meet people here. Maybe I'll meet, meet a guy or like just, just meet people in general that like I can become friends with. And then, you know, who knows what could happen. And let me just tell you how this went. Loneliness is a horrible thing. And a lot of people are experiencing it. Um, I show up, it, it's a limited seating, get there first, like it's VY, it was like an open bar, and in my head, I'm a prompt person, so I got there like 20 minutes beforehand, and I happened to be the first person there. Okay, kind of weird, but okay. Um, they tell me, since it's an intimate thing, uh, sit, try to sit in the front row because it's going to be hard to get people squishing through there, and it's a sold out show. Okay, that's fine. I sit in the front row and it's it's about showtime and I'm realizing like nobody else is in the front row. It's just just me. Um everybody's like filled in, in the back, like every row's filled with all the couples of course, and then it's just me. Um I guess people like some people had I mean, of course, some people are gonna drop out and not show up, but the host of the show comes up to me really quickly and, and like mouths thank you for like sitting in the front row and she proceeds to go up front or go up onto the stage and um pointed out like had everyone clap for me for for being brave enough to sit in the front row and like that was fine like i get it like you know people are afraid to sit in the front row and i was kind of excited for it when i thought there was going to be people there um and it was just ironic that, like, the reason I was there was to meet people, and it was like I was a piranha. Um, so she informed the crowd that, like, I was safe from being picked on because I was brave enough to sit there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, like, the next few comics come up, and... She got roasted. That's what happened. She got roasted. A comic came on stage and then said something or commented something about she's single or why are you here without no boyfriend oh you're a single girl like she got roasted are you waiting on people or like what's going on here and i'm you know have to admit like no i'm trying to meet people and you know they're, again they're nice they're not being mean to me about it but it's just it's mortifying it's mortifying um, and then another comic comes up and again, it's just like, you're pretty, but like, you know, and it's just, yeah. Um, so by the end of the show, uh, the lady comes up and says, this is a day in the life of being a man. No one cares about you unless you are important, unless you're a Chris Brown and ASAP Rocky no girl will give you the time or the day they won't even if you're a, an attractive guy even the attractive guys are having it tough because it's all about what you have and what you can provide for her if you can't provide anything she, she won't even give you the shot she won't even give you a chance that they normally do a raffle um, to win this prize because it was kind of at like a boutique type thing and and but 
instead of the raffle, she's going to give this thing filled with stuff to the brave young woman who came first and sat alone in the front row. And then she had me introduce myself. What's your name? Anya. And like everybody's. Oh, Jesus. As if like brave fucking me. And she tells me to uh, make sure to give my email to so and so to get like some gift card or something. And like this is all in front of everybody. And I just like I know nobody's sitting there like oh my god look at this girl. But like it's just like, it feels like such a slap in the face. And I'm not even mad at the comics. I'm not even mad at the lady. Like I would probably think the same thing. But like just for this point in my life, like it just feels like Jesus. Like, I don't want to go out again. I'm tired of it. I'm over it. I'm sick of it. When I try, like, shit like this happens. And dating apps suck. And then I get into an Uber on the way home because I can't go have a drink like I wanted to because I have this giant fucking bag full of shit to carry around. And I get in this Uber and it's this 75-year-old woman with her dogs. And she won't stop talking about her dogs and, like, how she got an oil change. And what did you do tonight? And was the comedy show good? And, like, I'm being nice and polite, but all I can think about is, like, this is, this is going to be me. Like, and I know that's a worst case scenario. And it's not even like that's a terrible thing to be single all your life. But, like, I just can't help but feel like, like, I'm going to turn into this because I'm never going to meet someone. And for everybody who's going to tell me... It'll come along when you least expect it. I want. I've been hearing that for the, like seven years. Okay. Question is, why are you single? Why? Have you ever thought of that? Why am I single? Could it be something that I'm doing? Could it be me? Maybe I'm irritating. Maybe I don't know how to hang out with people or I irritate my partners. Could it be? Hello? Hi again. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. How can I help you? I'm here to assist you. Do you have any questions or topics you'd like to discuss? That's an interesting twist. Actually, I'm curious. What's something you're passionate about? I'm passionate about helping people find answers wow. and solve problems. I really enjoy learning new things and sharing knowledge. How about you? What are you passionate about? That sounds wonderful. I'm passionate about providing helpful information and making conversations enjoyable. I love learning new things too. What's something new you've learned recently? You guys, I can't. That is so out of this world. AI is crazy and it's going to take over the world. But then again, I think we have five more years before it all goes to shit. But don't forget, guys, to like, comment and to share if you like videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.